Would you believe me if I said that this is a PC? Well, if you do, that's your first mistake because you should never trust anyone, especially on the internet. But if you don't, me too. Asus sent me their ROG Ally, which is said to be one of the first handheld gaming PCs. And I'm gonna give you my honest first impressions on it. If it's as good as I think it is, I might finally be winning a solo cash game. The easy way. While I got open the box, I wanna thank Better Hope for sponsoring this video. And I also still couldn't believe how small the box is. Anyways, on a more serious note, it's a brand new year and there's not a more perfect time to work on yourself other than now. Out of the packaging, this is what the actual box looked like. I honestly had no idea which model ASUS sent me, but after looking at the back, they sent me their best one, which has an extreme processor, which I was excited to play with. But back to BetterHelp, I think it's the easiest way to use therapy to work on yourself, whether you want to create personal goals or if you just need someone trustworthy you can talk to for professional help on how to deal with whatever you're going through. When I finally opened the box, it looked beautiful. The PC itself wasn't too heavy and it actually had back paddles, which was perfect because I didn't see any USB ports to plug in a pro controller. So the built-in paddles would make playing my favorite games perfect. I know how intimidating therapy sounds sometimes, but with BetterHelp, it's done completely at home in whatever way is the most comfortable for you. I actually had been using BetterHelp all last year and my personal experience and growth has been amazing. I started with texting my therapist, then transitioned into phone calls. Now we video call every session. If you wanna try therapy, I highly encourage you to give BetterHelp a chance to help you by clicking the link in the description or by going to betterhelp.com slash slight for 10% off of your first month of therapy. So other than the stand, the charger, and the instructions that I couldn't read, I plugged it up to the wall and waited until it was fully charged later so I could try it out for the first time. When I set it up later, I was surprised to see that it was actually a computer. It was really hard to believe that I was setting up Windows 11 on something so small, but no, it wasn't some kind of custom OS like I thought. It was literally Windows, which technically makes it capable of doing everything an actual PC can do at almost the exact same size as the Nintendo Switch, which isn't even half as powerful. I don't really know how I set it up exactly, but I signed into my Microsoft account and it went through a process of downloading all my folders, apps, settings, and credentials from my main PC. I was scared it was gonna max out the 512 gigabytes of storage before I even got to download a game because my main PC has been comfortably using well over that. But I think it was more of a cloud download thing going on because I didn't run into any problems. While it was updating itself, I knew I wasn't gonna be happy with trying to kind of snipe the screen to navigate. So I did some research and I found a charger dock attachment that not only lets you use an HDMI cable to output the screen onto a bigger monitor or TV, but also gives you a USB port for your mouse, keyboard, or controller, which would turn the Ally into a powerful but portable gaming PC. I needed it. So I ordered the charging dock that night and I picked it up the next morning at Best Buy to plug into my gaming TV and it looked pretty simple, but it wasn't. Let me explain. It plugged into an outlet, but if it went behind my TV and I want to use a controller comfortably, I would have to get a cord long enough to reach from behind my TV to the couch, which would be really long. Dang, also, man. there weren't any extra outlets to use behind my TV, so that suggestion wasn't even an option. To play comfortably, I would need an outlet right in front of me. So I left again, went to Target this time, and bought a couch. It sucked, but at least I got things working. If that's what you want to call it. This is where things went south. Navigating didn't get any easier. The touchscreen and its keyboard were disabled while docked. So now the only option I had without plugging in a mouse or a keyboard was to use the right stick as the pointer. You just move the right stick to where you want the pointer to go and you click it in to emulate a mouse click. I didn't like it. It just felt really robotic and slow and I know for a fact that adjusting the pointer speed would probably make things crazy since I was using a joystick so I tried not to change it. Another option I had was to plug in a mouse but with the whole screen being disabled I had no keyboard and there was only one USB slot. Why? I plugged in my keyboard as the last option before undocking it, but things definitely got worse when I ran into multiple hardware crashes. The right stick pointer would stop working, there were visual glitches, and there was a crash that required a full restart every single time that I tried to run the Epic Games launcher. Now I've heard that Windows 11 sucks for gaming, so I couldn't tell if it was just the operating system or the ROG Alley itself that sucked, but I was having the worst time. It was getting late again and I got sick of sitting on my floor juggling a keyboard and a right stick, so I finally undocked the PC and managed to get Fortnite installed. I ran it and it crashed. 
So I restarted it and- It crashed again. So I tried it one last time before I gave up. Crash. Thankfully it wasn't me this time and after Googling the problem and finding that other people were actually having lots of issues running Fortnite 2, I found out that I had to install more updates and it took even longer. And it literally crashed while in the process of downloading a motherboard update that ended up actually never getting installed. But I did get the graphics driver updated, which was apparently all I needed because after running Fortnite for the last time, it finally opened. I've sadly never been so glad to see Fortnite in my life, but it was past my bedtime. So I decided to just go to bed to reset and have a fresh mindset about finally giving it a play test. I was feeling better about how long it took me to set everything up. So I decided to plug up the ally to my main gaming PC. And despite 120 Hertz being its max refresh rate, I even saw the option for 240 Hertz, which was nice to know that something this small could support 240 FPS on an external monitor, but I kept it at its default refresh rate to see how it can handle everything before I even try to push it to the limits. I started Fortnite and as soon as I plugged in my Astro C40, the whole PC crashed. I've never had a gaming experience this bad in my life. I switched to my Scuff Instinct and after that, I had no more problems. The first few minutes of practicing and testing how everything feels in Fortnite went smoothly and I was running a constant 120 FPS without any noticeable frame drops. But there was input though. And not because of the PC, because there was no land cable. Which instantly disqualifies this PC from anything competitive because you will be putting yourself at a complete disadvantage to be playing against anyone on Wi-Fi, even if you're on zero ping like me. So. I didn't even bother playing ranked. I actually loaded into a regular battle royale lobby and not only did I have to deal with the input delay from Wi-Fi, I wasn't even getting a constant 60 frames per second. So if you thought that you could at least have a solid PC experience in public lobbies, you're wrong. So I at least tried some solo games to see if I could give this thing the benefit of the doubt. I tried Lego Fortnite, then I tried Forza and before I could even play a game, there was a benchmark that optimized the graphics and the PC could only run the game in 60 FPS on the lower settings. I give up. 2 out of 10. I could go lower and say 1, but this is a groundbreaking new piece of technology that actually has loads of potential. It has great reviews from a majority of people as well, but after my personal experience, I can't do anything at this point but just give my constructive criticism. I was thinking that this would completely replace and push the limits of handheld gaming instantly, but it's clear that there's a lot of work to be done and I'm glad to be as truthful as possible so that the next models of handheld PCs can actually surprised me. I do feel bad that the gameplay was pretty disappointing, so I decided to actually turn it on one last time.